Just ahead on 11 News at 6, Houston's Turf Club files a high-stakes lawsuit alleging a big scam in the Texas horse racing industry. A city councilman takes lots of heat over his plan to tax non-Houstonians who work in the city. George Strait makes a lifelong dream come true for one young lady. Mardi Gras madness, Norm at work, a beautiful forecast, and much more coming up next. of success. Will you pay the service man? Is all that expense really worth it? Does a small wallet book yeah? Time to put your foot down. You put a fortune in his hand. Before the price of success drives you to the poor house, make the smart move to Texas' best-selling luxury car and get up to a $1,500 cash dividend on any new Cadillac. At Academy, men's cowboy cut Wranglers in colors $19.99, ladies $22.99. Academy for performance. KHOU-TV, Houston. And now, from 11 News in Houston, Sylvan Rodriguez, Susan Banks, Dr. Neil Frank with weather, and Gib Nielsen on sports. This is KHOU 11 News at 6. There are fighting words tonight backing a billion-dollar lawsuit against the Texas Racing Commission. Those behind the suit claim there is a conspiracy in the works to control the fledgling horse racing business right here in Texas. Good evening. Members of the Houston Turf Club say they have lost out in their bid to build a horse track because a rich investor was out to corner the market. 11 News reporter Philip Bruce says the charges read like a conspiracy novel, but the Turf Club says it has evidence to back them up. There are no first-class tracks such as this one anywhere in Texas. A group of Houston investors say that's because one man wanted it that way until he could own them all. He is Edward DeBartolo Sr., a wealthy Ohio businessman who owns horse tracks across the country, including Louisiana Downs outside Shreveport. His purpose, my friend, is to have all the tracks in Texas. Collins represents a Houston turf club, which wanted to build a first-class track on this stretch of land in northwest Houston. Last November, after months of wrangling with the State Racing Commission, the Houston Turf Club lost its bid for a Class 1 license. Today, the club is suing, charging the Racing Commission's decision was a product of a massive conspiracy. These people misused both tax dollars and charitable contributions to buy influence and to apply pressure on elected officials. The Turf Club's lawsuit alleges the state's highest officials, including the governor, the attorney general, and the entire racing commission, were involved in the conspiracy. The suit says illegal funds were raised to bribe state officials. And it charges that the mastermind of the scheme was Edward DeBartolo Sr., the multimillionaire whose family holdings include the San Francisco 49ers. We believe that Mr. Bartolo has participated in this conspiracy. We believe that uh, he has organizations in place to control racing in this state. In Washington today, Governor Bill Clements called the conspiracy theory ridiculous. I haven't heard of the lawsuit. I don't know anything about it. No one's told me about it. And I don't know what they're talking about. The Turf Club has made some sweeping allegations, but so far has offered little evidence to back up any of the charges. But the group says it will release some new information tomorrow and has hinted that it may include tape-recorded conversations with some of the people named in the lawsuit. Philip Bruce, 11 News. This evening, predictions that a proposed commuter tax in Houston will never even get out of the gate. Under this proposal, if you work in Houston but live outside the city limits, you'd pay a tax of a dollar a day. As reporter Bill Jeffries tells us, opposition is mounting rapidly. As you fight through traffic each morning, 150,000 or more of the people commuting around you live outside the city limits but come into the city to work. They would pay a dollar a day under a councilman's proposal. 
we furnish them with fire protection, police protection, garbage pickup, the strain that's our, on our sewage system and wastewater system. On the taping of this week's Steve Smith Sunday program, McGowan said the plan is workable and would bring in more than $30 million a year. I think that it's uh, probably dead on arrival. <laughs> no, I really don't see it going anyplace. I think that it's, uh, it's so bad that it will not, I think it's just against everything that the city of Houston has been trying to do. Mancuso says McGowan has floated the commuter tax idea before, but this time Mayor Kathy Whitmire and several council members say it is worth considering. A private tax expert says a commuter tax may cause business to move outside the city limits. The idea of imposing a commuter tax is going in exactly the wrong direction. The city ought to be trying to make itself more attractive to job creation. People on the street give the commuter tax mixed reviews. I think it's a pretty good idea. You do? Of course, I live in Houston, so. <laughs> I think it's a very bad idea. How come? Because I don't live in Houston. Right offhand, it sounds good because I live in Houston and I just soon uh, get a little help on uh, covering all these costs. I'm also paying the Hardy toll road to $4 a day to drive on it, so. You think that's enough? That's enough. A commuter tax wouldn't bring in any money this year, but all of the debate over it comes at a time when the folks at City Hall do desperately want to raise some cash. Council members want to hire more police, more paramedics. They want more heavy trash picked up, particularly since the economic summit is coming this summer. But council has already shot down a fee for regular trash pickup, which would have brought in millions of dollars. So this year's budget battle is boiling down to a usual debate. If council wants more, it will likely have to raise property taxes or make painful budget cuts. Bill Jeffries, 11 News. Talks to end the Kroger strike continue at this hour, but no word yet of any end to the week-long stalemate. Union leaders are meeting with Kroger executives in North Houston to try to work out a new wage and benefit package. Kroger claims employee support for the strike is wavering. The chain says up to 40% of employees have gone back to work. Union representatives insist only 10% have returned to their jobs. Police have charged a Houston man with murder in connection with a shooting late yesterday afternoon near Yates High School. Police say 19-year-old Robert Raspberry told some friends Troy Haynes stole his car. Haynes apparently overheard Raspberry, then started shooting. Raspberry was shot in the chest and died at the hospital. A 16-year-old girl was shot in the leg. Haynes was on probation for burglary when that shooting took place. Tonight, homicide investigators are saying they believe gang members are responsible for two shootings and robberies at a Heights area car wash. On February 6th, John Reno was shot in the head after he stopped to wash his car. The victim's red Mustang was found the next day. Police say a man who may resemble this drawing is the person who reportedly killed Reno. The Raider gang is known to frequent the Heights area. Also, the car wash has a lot of gang graffiti uh, written on it out there. So there's it's definitely gangs are going to this car wash. The suspect is believed to be a member of the Yale Village Raiders gang. They say he drives a late model customized truck that looks like the truck in this sketch. The word Excalibur is scrawled across the back of the window. If you know anything about the suspect or that truck, call police at 247-5418. Well, for the second time in two weeks, Houston Vice officers patrolled the curbs of South Main searching out streetwalkers. Last night's prostitution sting netted more than 40 so-called Johns. The South Main area near the Astrodome has a notorious reputation for drugs and prostitution. These illegal activities increase when big attractions like the rodeo pass through town. Police say they're getting so many new complaints from the area that they return for yet another crackdown using female undercover officers this time as decoys. We've arrested everybody from probation officers to males coming up soliciting for prostitution with small children in the back of the car. Okay. In all, 42 would-be customers were charged with solicitation of prostitution. They could receive up to $1,000 in fines and six months in jail. Well, moving on, this is the last weekend for Mardi Gras celebrations in Galveston, but it's also considered the best. Well, the biggest parades and parties all take place over the next three days, and 11 News reporter Dave Failing is in Galveston getting a taste of Carnival de Brazil. We hey. sure are, Sylvan. Things are really just now getting started for a very big night here in Galveston. With me right now is Doug Matthews, the city manager down here. What kind of crowd are you expecting with this great weather we're having? 150,000 tonight and 400,000 tomorrow. Is that near record, I guess, 400,000 tomorrow? It would be a uh, record. Think crowd. you could have any problems, uh, are going to have any problems handling that? No, we've increased security by 28%. We want the people in Houston to have a great time. Very good. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate it. 
some of the things that people are going to be coming down here to see, fellas like Chubby Checker. How are you doing tonight? I'm getting ready for the mummers. I'm getting ready. How's this going to be this weekend? This is like Philadelphia here. The, yeah, you brought Philadelphia with That's you. You're right. from Philly. Yes. These guys are from Philly. Who are these my guys? neighborhood. Follow my neighborhood. We're going to see you do the uh, mummer shuffle here, correct? That's it. That's it. Have at it. Thank you. Chubby Checker and the Mummers from Philadelphia. Just one of the many things you're going to be able to see down here in Galveston. Again, a big night and a big weekend here. Back to you. All right, Dave, looks like fun. I can hardly wait to come on down. Dave, but we expected to see Chubby Checker do the twist. <laughs> Dave can't do it. He, he does, does that very well, either. though. <laughs> well, he does the, the shuffle okay, but, you know, he's getting up there, isn't he? Oh, he's still got all the rhythm <laughs> oh, in the world. Oh, yeah, I guess. And if you're not ready for that, another big event that's in full swing, of course, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo at the Astrodome. That's where our, where one Houston woman saw her dream come true. Next, find out why she got to meet her idol straight on. I can't believe I hugged to a strike. I was sold on Toyotas after my 83 4x4. I got over half of what I paid for it when I traded it in. And I figure it cost me about $75 a month to own. 140,000 miles, and I only replaced the water pump. If it hadn't been for the 4Runner, I might have driven that truck forever. My 4Runner is the first vehicle I've had that uh, combines the convenience of 4x4 four four and 4 doors. I got an excellent deal. I made out like a bandit, you bet. Toyota quality pays for itself. That's why it pays to see your Toyota dealer now. Reason number 17 to see your Nissan dealer now. $1,000 cash back direct from Nissan on the fun and reliable Sentra Standard. That means right now you pay only $63.99. See your nearest Nissan dealer now where satisfaction is standard equipment. Reason number 19 to see your Nissan dealer now. The Stanza Challenge. If you're thinking of buying an Accord, test drive a Stanza first. We're so sure you'll want the Stanza that if you still buy the Accord, we'll give you $100. Take the Stanza Challenge now at your nearest Nissan dealer. My sister Christy has changed a lot. She's not writing scary notes about dying anymore. If your need for change involves behavior problems, call West Oaks at 777-7100 because change can happen. Take on dirt, grease, and grime with a pack of three True Test professional cleaners. Just $2.98 in February at participating True Value Hardware Store. Was another full house of a lot of screaming women, I'm sure, at the rodeo last night when George Strait took the stage for the second night. Strait and his ace in the whole band are a big hit every year with rodeo fans. Sam Sosedo joins us live from the Astor Hall now with the story of one of those fans who will remember last night for a long, long time. Sam? That's right, Susan. And so, and 20 year old Terry Hawthorne is a state rodeo champ, a pole bending, bending champion. Her name is listed in the State High School Rodeo Hall of Fame. But last September, her rodeo days nearly ended when she got into terrible accident. She was driving a friend of hers to work early one morning. She fell asleep at the wheel, got into the wreck. The wreck almost severed her arm. She said she'd fallen asleep. The next thing she remembers is waking up, seeing the doctors working on that arm, and miraculously, they were able to reattach the arm. Terry is a big George Strait fan, and all during her long hospital stay, kept a poster of him on her hospital room wall. As we look into each other's eyes, Found our bodies lost in paradise. Word of all this made its way back to the country singer, and last night, he invited Terry and a friend to come backstage and meet him oh. after the show. We weren't allowed to take our news camera into the room, but we did get to record the sound of what happened and take a few snapshots. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh God. I've heard about you in the pastor. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. <laughs> I seen you last night and tonight. I swear to God. I... Oh, y'all came to both shows? Oh, I did. I tried to jump over the fence last night, but they caught me. 
Well, you have to come. set our record then tonight. I appreciate it. Oh, it was great. And it's only my ninth time to see you. You have beautiful eyes. <laughs> Everything going good? Oh, yeah, my hands. No pain no. anymore, huh? It was hurting until I come in here, but now I ain't feeling nothing. <laughs> It sure was nice well, meeting you. Nice meet you I got to get up. Oh, oh, God. Wait, 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 wait. Let me catch my breath. I can't believe I hugged George Strait. Well, I got to meet George Strait. I didn't get to hug him. It didn't excite me as much as it excited her. By the way, the attendance record set last night was at 55,580. That beats the record set by Clint Black on Sunday by 145 people in the audience. By the way, Chicago performs tonight. There are tickets available. Sylvan, Susan? Boy, Sam, she was excited. I guess you and I are going to have to get some black hats. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't feel any pain in that arm either. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, well, we're not quite finished with a rodeo in our newscast. A little bit later, our own Norm Mule puts on the costume and climbs into the barrel to become a rodeo clown for the night. This is old. This is new. At Montgomery Ward, 1,000 of the hottest brand name items in America are on sale now. With big screens, hot jeans, everybody's dream machine. What else is new? Oh, ladies, it's these crazy nights of power and megabytes. 1,000 of the hottest brand name items, all backed by the Montgomery Ward price match guarantee. All on sale now. Montgomery Ward, still is what's in it for you. New eyes, new bones, new teeth. They all need the specially formulated nutrition of new Nine Lives Kitten Dinners. Feed your baby new Nine Lives Kitten Dinners. It's 100% perfect nutrition right from the start. And as your kitten grows older, don't forget the family of Nine Lives canned and dry varieties. Who are you calling old? The KHOU Housing Report, a series dedicated to the needs of home buyers and sellers. We're ready for a new home. Should we buy or lease? Buying has advantages. You build up equity as you make payments. Your money works for you. It can be a hedge against inflation. There's a tax advantage, and you know it's yours. But leasing makes sense for those who need flexibility or can only make a short-term commitment. No answer is right for everybody. Consider your situation. More tips next time on the KHOU Housing Report. Several months ago, Star Furniture had its greatest single day in history. It was called the greatest one day sale. And now it's coming back for one more colossal day. All Star stores were closed today to get ready for the return of the greatest one day sale tomorrow. For one day only, save 15 to 57% on everything. And with Star's famous interest-free financing, you don't pay till June. The greatest one-day sale. It's back Saturday, 10 to 9. I bet people are tired of hearing about the strike, and you're tired about telling about it. I really am, but uh, I will continue to do so, since that's just my job. <laughs> that's right. And since it's Friday afternoon, day nine of the baseball talks, and it appears a settlement could happen soon. Negotiators met for nearly four hours today, twice as long as they've met before. The two groups have agreed to work this weekend, and that in itself is positive news, although Union Chief Don Fear says there are still some major problems. We have very large chasms on the central issues. Um, the biggest one I expect in the end will be what we've all thought it will be, and that is arbitration eligibility for players with less than three years of service. Even if an agreement is reached soon, there will be a shortened exhibition season. On our 5 o'clock broadcast, we spoke with Astros players representative Jimmy Deshays. The talks have turned positive. Uh, yesterday's proposal, I think, was a step in the right direction. Uh, the fact that they talked basically all day today has to be a positive sign. The players' union also repeated its threat to walk away from negotiations if further progress isn't made soon. Well, the Rockets are back in action tonight with a new look in the lineup. The new point guard, Vernon Maxwell, will be joining the team tonight as they take on the New Jersey Nets. Maxwell was obtained from the Spurs Wednesday night, the day before the NBA trading deadline. Head coach Don Chaney says Maxwell will see some more playing time and don't expect him really to be the savior at this particular point. The Rockets have some serious troubles at the point guard position. Maxwell may help, but it may take much more than Maxwell to get them back into the playoff picture. 
In tennis, the on-the-court antics of John McEnroe cost him dearly last month at the Australian Open. It was during his fourth round match against Sweden's Michael Pernfors when he was warned once for unsportsmanlike conduct, docked a penalty point for throwing his racket in disgust, and then lost the entire match after verbally abusing the referee in the chair. McEnroe, as well as most everyone in tennis, was surprised by the decision then, and later he was fined $6,500. Today, McEnroe lost his appeal, and that could hurt him later. If he's fined another $1,000 this year, McEnroe will be banned from the next Grand Slam event, like Wimbledon or the U.S. Open. If you're looking for something different to check out this weekend, we'd like to invite you to stop by and see, even participate in the Dream Season CBS Sports Display that we're sponsoring this weekend out at the Town & Country Mall. There are six action items that you can participate in to win. Hats, t-shirts, sweatshirts, and other CBS sports items. There are free throw and three-point contests. How about this? In golf, a chip to win game. A game where you can attempt to kick a field goal plus other games. And that will all be tonight, Saturday, and Sunday at the Town and Country Mall. You can even be a guest sportscaster. Oh, and talk right. to Giff Nielsen. Oh, sounds that sounds like, like a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks, Giff. You bet. Doc will be up next with our weather forecast for the weekend. Stay with us. Unlike our competition's elaborate packaging, you'll find no box inside the Budget Gourmet box. You'll find no bags. And you'll find no plates. Because these things cost money. Money we'd rather spend on the one thing you will find inside our box. Our food. The Budget Gourmet and the Budget Gourmet Light. Expensive food at reasonable prices. The race is on, and the votes will be in, but you'll have to watch to see who will win on the Brady's tonight at 7. Having one cat can certainly be a lot of fun. Two or three cats can be even more fun. Unfortunately, having this much fun has one serious drawback, the cat box. With more than one cat, you need new Tidy Cat MC Multiple Cat Formula specially formulated for the extra moisture and odor problems of homes with more than one cat. Look for my new Tidy Cat MC in the bright blue bag, because when it comes to cats, the more the merrier. Right, guys? Touchdown, Warren Moon. To sustain maximum physical and mental efficiency, I rely on New Form Nutritional Supplements. These 100% natural products contain essential vitamins, amino acids, and minerals critical to superior health. If you want to lose weight, gain stamina and energy, and enjoy a healthier life, New Form is the product for you. Read this brochure on the New Form display and take advantage of nutrition for the 90s. If you're in the market for audio, video, home office equipment, and appliances, come to Highland this weekend because Highland Superstores offers great values on everything in every store. For three days, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, this RCA VHS autofocus camcorder with low light performance is a great value at $797. So if you're in the market for audio, video, home office equipment, and appliances, this is the weekend to do it. And Highland is the place. Well, I flew over to Gulfport, Mississippi yesterday. The uh, Mississippi Academy of Science allowed me to be their keynote speaker at their 54th annual meeting. And I was glad to see that the clouds and the rain that we had around here Wednesday moved rapidly to the east. And you can see it was a nice day to be flying along the Gulf Coast. And as we put the satellite pictures in motion, watch the clouds move on to the east as this system, I believe, is finally going to move off the east coast. The front is still trailing down into Florida, but coming back today, had a peek down into the French quarters. And for those of you going over to the New Orleans, it looks good this weekend, but I'd take a jacket because it's going to be chilly in the evening and particularly in the early morning. And it also looks good if you're going down to the island for Mardi Gras South. And so both uh, events look like that they're going to be okay this weekend. Now that front has moved on down into Florida, about an inch and a half of rain at Tampa this afternoon. And you can see the temperatures are still quite warm ahead of the front.
80s in South Florida where they had some sunshine, 60s underneath the clouds and the rain. How about a 64 in the nation's capital this afternoon, even a 59 in Boston? Behind that front, you can see the cold air is spilling down into the southeast at the present time. Cleveland had a 51 yesterday, and they dropped to 31 today. You remember Augusta, Georgia had a 79. That was a record. Well, they're in the 50s today. And there was some snow associated with this, 6 to 10 inches of snow finally in the eastern part of Michigan. And there's some more snow spreading on into Wisconsin this afternoon ahead of this system here. Now out west, they had a nice warm up. As you can take a look here, we finally got back into the 70s at Phoenix after a week of temperatures in the 40s and the 50s. That high pressure there has locked in and we're seeing easterly flow and that means always warm flow as you move on towards the Southern California area. Here's a new front though. This one will be moving rapidly to the east. I'll show you that in a minute. And there is some very cold air behind that front. Over the state today, nice warm up out in the west and the north, some 10 to 15 degrees with temperatures in the 60s and even the 70s. Dallas had a 52 yesterday. We ended up with 67. That's exactly what we're supposed to have. 61 to 5 on the island is actually 3 degrees above normal. Small craft advisory for offshore waters. The winds are still blowing quite a lot. I think they are going to subside some tonight and they won't be quite as windy tomorrow. Now here's the new system moving rapidly to the east and that front may even come by us, but we're not going to know it. It'll just reinforce the cool. So it looks like that as the weekend comes, we're going to have cold nights, warm days, and that's what our forecast would suggest. Going down tonight, you're going to see temperatures in the 40s, overnight lows about 35 degrees sunshine back up into the 60s tomorrow and then let's just leave it that way as we go on into the weekend a little warming trend maybe by Monday and Tuesday so a little bit chilly in the mornings great. but in the afternoon great and boy listen for all this outdoor mm -hmm. activity great great weekend sure time to check on Norm's activities right now tonight <laughs> Norm goes to work at the rodeo with a man who sees the business end of a bull more than a bull rider his name is Quail Dobbs his job is to protect the Cowboys after the ride Oh, you got a pretty good size nose. I don't know if I got enough makeup or not. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you're in relation to Jimmy Durante? <laughs> not that I know of. I got his nose there. You sure do, fella. Yes, I've been roped into being a rodeo clown. The smell of grease paint, the roar of the crowd, the bulls. Bulls? Did I say bulls? <laughs> This is where I find out that there are two types of rodeo clowns, bullfighters like Miles Hare and Rick Chapman, and those who work the barrel like Quail Dobbs. Wisely, I opt for the barrel. You need to put your left foot, put your left foot out first, okay. and then go down and curl, and, and, and try to get as close to, try to get as far from, from this edge as you can down there. See what I mean? Now, now what you want to do is, Keep your head, always keep your head down that way and push on the sides. Okay. Then you have to know how to walk in the barrel. It weighs about 160 pounds. Bull weighs more. With or without makeup, my instructor is one of the best. He's been at it now for 26 years. I was born, raised in West Texas for a uh, cowboy, whatever form of it was kind of a way of life. I tried to be a rodeo contestant. I tried to ride bareback horses and bulls. And uh, it looked like I was putting on some kind of a clown act every time I got on a bareback horse or a bull. So Quail Dobbs became a clown. He used to fight the bulls. Now he leaves that to the younger guys. Quail says the most dangerous part of his job now is the comedy. After all, you can really bomb. This is the most dangerous thing we do this lot. It's by far more dangerous than the bull. That was a black powder explosion. Just look at the size of the load. You ever gotten injured with these? No, I haven't. Uh, but I've been, <laughs> you can't be too careful with them. I've got a friend who's got a, doesn't have a thumb left. Meanwhile, Norm at work gets the big build up on the big screen in front of a record crowd. It's time to go to work now. Okay, Norman. The rodeo folks have promised a bull, but that turns out to be bull, and he doesn't show. The only thing I can figure is that I must have scared him off earlier when I stared.